forgot a step. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. So glad to see you here with me today. And if you're watching the replay, thank you very much. Hi, Vicki. How are you doing today? Glad you were able to uh, break away to spend some time with us. Hey, Michelle. And Vicki, I did, uh, I don't know if you saw the, the post, but I did um, set up the Zooms. We have one tomorrow afternoon and then next Tuesday morning. Hi, Jackie. Hope everybody is doing awesome. Hi, Veronica. Not Hi, Regina. Haven't seen you for a while. How are you doing? Lovely to have you join us. Swapping my stuff around here. Hey, Philippa, and there's Andrea. Hi, Gail. One of the nice things about doing Cordage is I don't have to look at what I'm doing until I make a join, so I can just watch the chat. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, Philippa, how are you doing there? You guys are still safe, just really wet. Hi, Joanne. Whoops. Sound check okay, I hope. So I had this um, this fabric that I had done some dyeing on, and it was just kind of blah, and I was really just feeling way too lazy to over dye it. And I had this other stuff that just didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. So yesterday I just ripped it into strips, and I thought, let's just make some cordage. And then, of course, I can do a coiled basket. So Philippa said the South Island is mostly fine. It's the North that's in trouble. Dang. Well, I hope things aren't too bad. I, I don't know whether um, I, I don't understand the geography enough to know where um, Margaret is. Just sending a note to T or maybe um, Gail, could you say? Oh, there's Terry. Ha ha ha. I was just going to try and send you a message. Yeah, cordage is just, you know, and I think I'm going to have to do a ton of cordage because if you saw, um, I did it on Instagram and then I, I um, put up a short on my channel about finishing the fabric closet. Hey, Michelle, so glad to have you here a little bit. Philippa said you can re relate with hurricanes. Cyclones are the same thing. Mm. Icky, scary stuff. When I lived in Louisiana, I had to deal with the hurricanes. Did not like that. But I have so much huge yardage. Um, you know, like uh, king size sheets that I bought. And I'm going to do knots and cordage, I guess, with a lot of it so I can make a lot of baskets. That's the only thing I can think of. Anybody else has any ideas to do with, you know, large amounts of yardage? It's all been cut into, so it's not something that I would feel good donating. Hey, Sue Brown, Katrinka, hi. You've been using your sewing machine and stitching over it with sewing thread. Oh, are you using like the dissolvable stuff? So then you'll have this wonderful um, fabric when it's done. Hey, Barbie. Gail said no hurricanes or cyclones, but we had high wind yesterday and into today too. Had a couple of trees come down over the end of our driveway. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that's what we always worry about with the winds, having any of the big trees. We lost um, a big old oak tree a few years ago. Oh, you don't know about cordage. Okay, so let me put a stop in this one. Cordage, I start with a strip of fabric, or it could be a length of yarn. Hey, Margaret could be a length of yarn. It could be, um, I do it with scrap threads and it's helpful if they're all, you do it with grasses. And I, you start on an uneven thing. So one, one thing is shorter than the other. Hey, Denise, the peg idea. Oh, working, um, on a peg to do this, the twisting. And then you're just twisting in opposite directions. And you twist until it starts to twist back on itself. And that's your start. 
So, you know, if you just keep twisting, like I hold one end and it starts to twist on itself. And then the motion is just one twist away and you tuck this one under. One twist away and you tuck this one under. And that's it. And you can do it with just about anything. So I think some of the big, oh, using it to secure the, the cordage. Yeah, I probably knock it around. I um, I have this so that if I have to stop, I can put that there and not have it come unravel. Hi, Deb. Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, it really helps. Me just, you know, I mean, you can pick it back up again and redo it, but Michelle says I use two pieces to make my twine. Yeah, I start off with something folded in half. It's just easy to start. And then what I've got my, my piles here, these are my really long strips that were left. And these are the shorter ones. You're welcome, Michelle. And so, I, you know, I like to have uneven so that I'm not having a join at the same thing. I'm getting close to a join here. So I'll show you how I do that. I really like doing this with, I don't think I have any of the thread ones around. Hi, Nicola. I will do a little sample of it again. Make sure you guys are in live chat and not top chat. And you can do it with uneven strips. Um, you'll get some really wonky twine, which is also kind of fun. Yeah, same thing. I use, I do it with yarn. Um, when you're doing it with really thin pieces, sometimes it's kind of nice to to uh, do like four or five together. All right, so I'm getting close to a join here. And if I take another one like this, okay, you can see if I join these two, then I'm going to be at about the same length. And that might throw me off a little. So I think I'm going to do another long one here. Michelle said, I signed up for Leslie Rotner's mixed media weave, weaving and cordage would be really cool in the project. Absolutely. You can totally weave with the cordage. Yeah, Margaret, I do that normally too. And today I totally forgot to bring a sponge over. I normally have a sponge and a bowl right in front of me and then I can dampen it. Fingers work too, but that's probably not so cool to do on camera. Hey, Lori. So I'm getting to a join and I don't worry about this as much when I'm working with um, thinner stuff, but with the fabric, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to reduce the width here. Yeah, Birdie Goes Crafting is Andrea, for those of you that don't know, and tomorrow is our first Zoom of the month there was a link a little bit earlier and so i'm just gonna that one's fine so i'm gonna take this thicker end and i just cut a little bit at an angle there's no no precision on any of that all right and then i always have to remind myself which way i'm going and one of the things that i like to do with the um joins if they're too fat is it's a good place that you can then do kind of something decorative if it bothers you but you know me I'm not trying to get it all perfect and you could totally make a basket without doing the cordage first I don't like to do um, the stuff over rope because it sort of feels like it has to be a little bit precise whoops I'm not paying attention here all right so I've got my little bit here and I've got and I'm just going to overlap them Ah, oh, Sue says, anyone want a headache? I've got one. I'd be happy to give away. I woke up with one this morning. Mine has suddenly left. So sorry, you're going to have to keep that one for yourself. So I'm just going to lay one strip over the other. And again, the only reason I did any kind of a cutback was just to kind of reduce. And I, I usually just kind of um, reduce the, the thickness. And I just twist it a little bit before I start This is really cool done with um, grasses. 
Yeah, Gail sending you pain-free energy. I love it. I'm going to get this join in, and I will go back and show again, um, Nicola, how you get started with it. That's a great way to use up old fabric. I think some of the really big pieces I have, what I'm going to do, you know, the first, I don't know, the first day I was working with it, it took me forever to just kind of feel like it was um, an easy thing. And see, when you end up with these little bits like that, you can go ahead, then go later and go back in and cut them off. And uh, then once you get the hang of it, I mean, we can be driving in the car and I can be doing it. Well, that's the whole thing. Okay, I've got my join there. The kink is how you get started. So if you take something and I like to go kind of uneven so that my joints are going to be uneven. And you just start twisting in opposite directions. That's how you start, Nicola. I just have it on each hand here and I just twist. And then I usually end up holding one side twisting away, the other side twisting toward me. And you just, like anything else, the more you twist It's going to start eventually to do this. And that's what you want. That's your beginning. And from there, it's just more twisting. So, um, no, it doesn't really kink up on me when I'm doing it like this. Oh, felt great when you got out of bed and it came on since. Yikes. Yeah, lots of water. Do you guys have a storm heading your way? And then when it's all done, then I'll start coiling it to make a basket. And this is, um, it's a really funky material. It's a cotton blend of something. And so then the threads are coming apart and it's, so I've got lots of little, little threads and I'll make cordage out of this as well. And I figure I can either use it as the top rim after I get it started, then each time I add something, I've got two strands together. Nothing. I only fold it in half when I'm getting started. And then after that, I've always got two strands. Terry said, Michelle, you should see her do it with dried grasses, paper cut like injuries. Yeah, dried grasses, you have to be really careful. I learned not to use um, the outer edges of my Carex because they are so sharp when they're green and when they're dry, it's just like cutting yourself um, paper cuts all the time. But I've got a whole bunch of new things drying out in the garage that um, they need a few more months to dry, maybe another month. And then I will start on them. I'm hoping to make cordage for baskets. We've got this vinca that grows and I can get maybe a, a yard vine that's thin enough. So it's all out in the garage drying. And then I have a bunch of my grasses that are drying. Yeah, paper cuts. Yeah, you, you learn. You learn. So I thought since I was kind of, my brain was just like all over the place because I've been working on the studio. So this is the kinking up that'll happen if you get going really tight and, you know, it will go back on itself. But then if you wanted to, then you could make a twisted piece and you could make your basket out of that. So I think the really big sheets I'm going to cut, like maybe, I don't know if I could do it with three inch. Margaret, how's the, what's the widest you've done? I know I've done two inches. I'm just going to see you twist four times and one over. Oh, interesting. This is just the way I learned to do it with grasses. Yeah, very wet to soften the grasses. I learned using cordyline leaves in strips. Oh, yeah, you guys have got some great big leaves over there, Margaret. Terry said it was warm enough to get out in the shed this week. Sewing project soon. Wow. Yeah, I've, all, I've never done anything more than two inches, but I'm thinking 
I might try. The other thing I was thinking about trying, and those of you that have done baskets before, this might sound familiar. Um, on, let's see. So when you're doing pine baskets, pine needle baskets, which I don't have the patience for, they have like this little guide. Do I have anything? And you bunch your um, pine needles together and they go through a guide. Let's see if I can get that through there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try the two in, or three inch and, and see how it goes. I don't know if I can even, if I'd have threaded this. So you would put it, see if I can push it through with something. Because pine needles are so thin, about one inch is the widest you've worked with. Okay. So picture if these were a bunch of pine needles and you, you see these baskets where they might have 10 or 20 pine needles together, you would slide the pine needles through a guide and then you would make your ties, you know, on the other, I guess you'd make them on this side. I don't know, I have to look up the directions again. So what I was thinking is if I had a wider tube and I took, you know, really wide pieces of fabric, it would help it kind of uniformly you know, get the same size. It's going to, when you take it out of the tube, it's going to be kind of um, poofy, but I don't know. It's an experiment. I have an idea to try and we'll see. See how it goes. And it's pretty forgiving if you forget. Okay. So you forget that you were going backwards and, you know, you flip it over, you'll start to see something come undone and you can usually go back enough that you can Denise, there are a couple of videos um, that actually just slow down uh, the, the process. So if you go over to my channel and look for Cordage, you'll see there's very simple tutorials. But it's basically twist away and this one goes under. Twist away and the bottom one goes back. Barbie says, I grew up in the mountains and learned how to make pine needle baskets early. Oh, awesome. So Barbie, did you use a guide or did you just do it freehand? I'm so klutzy that I would not be able to do it without a guide. I did see a pine tree around the corner from us that actually had long enough needles that I might be able to use it. So I was going to say, I this isn't the most exciting thing to watch, but I figured it was nice because I would be able to chat and I just needed something that I didn't have to think about too much because I really have been working on uh, cleaning and reorganizing things. Terry's asking for likes, please. I have um, a pretty big opportunity that came my direction that uh, I need to I need to get some stuff in order in order to uh, follow through on it. Freehand, yeah, a guide would have helped a lot. I, I saw somebody doing it and it just made sense to me that if i did it with fabric i'm right-handed michelle but sometimes for some reason some things go easier for me on left hand can't fathom the pine needle weaving yeah it's real um what do i have here that's like the same all right i've got Ooh, that's not good If the pins were pine needles and, ah, here we go, and I put them through the guide, then the guide would tell, I could stop right there and do my coiling knot. This would be, you wouldn't be making cordage from the pine needles. And then you would pull it through and there would be more pine needles. So it'd be easier to do, oh, I can actually do it with this. Okay, so here's my idea that I want to try. If I had a whole bunch of fabric and I put it through the guide, whoops, put it through the guide and I would do my, my coiled knot and then as I pull it through, it's always, you know, if this is really packed, it's always going to be about the same width. 
which would make for a neater basket. I don't know. We'll have to, when I, when I do the experiment, I'll turn the camera on. So yeah, so I really need to finish the studio because I have to make a video in the studio and that'll give me a chance to do a studio tour and I have to do a couple of other videos and we will see, uh, we'll see where the opportunity takes me. But I got to get my, my ducks in a row. And then I'm just kind of trying to think of how to, as always, how to be able to maintain my art practice and create finished projects, which, you know, February is supposed to be my finished month. There's a whole lot of stuff in there to do to finish and and move forward. That's all. Just move forward. It's funny because buttonhole stitch, for some reason, I learned the left-handed version, but somebody pointed out that um, she also learned it left-handed, even though she's right-handed, because her Girl Scout leader was left-handed and taught it to her. So I thought, well, that could have been it. Ducks in a row, squirrels in a rave. Which one's more fun? Oh, the squirrels in the rave, so much more fun. Ducks in a row are kind of boring, right? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to be boring when I get my decks in a row. Hopefully it'll mean that I can do more of the fun stuff. I mean, you know what it's like when, you're, when your um, work area gets so congested that you can't find anything anymore. And I brought in a lot of materials. A friend brought me some wonderful stash supplies from Goodwill. And then I bought a lot of fibers and then I bought a bunch of beads and everything just kind of came in. And then I was digging through stuff to finish projects and it just got crazy. So um, I needed to get everything back in order so that I could find stuff again because I wasn't able to find the things that I wanted. All right. One thing that's really frustrating about this fabric is the way it's curling to the back side, which isn't nearly as colorful, but I'm not going to worry about that either. I am not. I bought, has anybody used a yarn winder? Uh, I have a ton of skeins that have to get wound. And I finally caved in and spent 60 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that, on a yarn winder with a, what do they call it, a drift up top so that I can easily get the things wound up. So I have to do that, which then I can make sure that I have enough space for things. And I, I had to take a look at the studio and decide, is there some stuff that's ready for me to... Um, to sell off. And I think that I've got a huge stash of um, the things you press into the wax, wax seals. Um, I have a bunch of those that have never been used that I'm probably going to sell off. I've got encast encaustic stuff that I've never opened that I'm probably going to sell off. It's like, I love it, but it's not something that I'm going to do. Are they fun, Philippa? I, you know, it looks pretty simple. I was hoping some of the stuff, you know, stuff would go more into balls than cakes, but we'll see. Gail, I just, you know, yeah, better for the fibers, but since I'm not knitting clothes or crocheting clothes, um, I, I need it to be in balls and I get so tangled up and then the skein falls on the floor and then the white dog hair gets in it. Yeah, the wax seals can make great dangles, but I just, I, I don't, I'm not doing books as much anymore. And so I might keep like one, but I don't, I probably have, I probably have 20, which is ridiculous because I have the stupid obsessive personality that I'm sure Barbie can relate to, right? <laughs> and maybe a few of the rest of you. The balls take up a lot less room in the way that I store things. Um, and when I use them, I don't have to worry. Because what, here's what happens with me with the skein. I get started and I'm fine until the skein's about a quarter of the way done. Then it gets all tangled up, especially if it gets knocked off the couch, which is pretty normal, and gets kicked around a little bit and then gets picked back up again. And so when they're in the balls, it's just very... Um, very easy to use. And yet, you know, it's all a matter of figuring out what works for you. I tried not, not balling things up and it didn't work for me. And you, you can look at all the craft organizational videos you want and you can get real excited seeing what somebody else has done. 
But unless you understand the way your own brain works, it, it may not be for you. Now, because my strips are uneven, I don't know if you, you can't really tell on this, but the cordage isn't exactly the same width. And I'm okay with that. This is a great TV activity because like I said, once you get, get a hang of it, then you don't have to pay attention to it. Yarn winding sounds like a good TV time activity. Yes. It, it, it's a perfect thing to do. I just, I can't even make sure that I have the right storage or that I have everything sorted the way I want it to until I get the rest of the, the skeins wound up. Philippa said a yarn holder cane basket works great. It's a very old item from the 60s. Oh. Hey, Brenda. Welcome. You number 14 thumbs up. I'm grateful for that. You've been quietly watching and it finally clicked. Can't wait to try. Well, let us know how you get on with it. Michelle said, I bought wooden clothespins to wind my threads. Oh, you're winding your threads on the wooden clothespins? I do my, uh, my embroidery threads are on the little cardboard things. And I know that gets creases in them. But for the kind of work I do, it seems to be just fine. Hey, Kathy. Oh, I hope you get a break. Well, I'm here. So nobody said anything. Maybe you can't quite notice, but I did get a lot of hair cut off. I got, um, I guess she cut off about 10 inches. <laughs> Terry says, yeah, Kathy, did you lock the door? Margaret says, my cordage is always very thicknesses because I'm often using scraps and bits and pieces and my joins always have ends hanging out but I like all that. Yeah. And I, I do some where I let all the ends hang out. And what I like about this fabric is it frays really well. And so I've got, I don't know how well you can see, cause I don't have the autofocus on, but there's little threads. And so it's going to, when it's wound into a basket, it's going to make some really nice edges. And sometimes what's fun to do on a join where you've got like the little strips hanging out, you can use that as a place to hang a charm or a bead. Yeah, it was, we have an absolutely wonderful gal that does our hair. And really it was just me being um, lazy about making the appointment. That's the only reason it wasn't done yet. Not really a close up, but that's, it's a lot shorter now. And I did play with the curling iron a little bit because um, my son's getting married uh, next month. So I needed to do something to make it look a little bit better. I just don't like, I don't enjoy, I've never enjoyed messing around with hair and makeup. Okay. Maybe when I was a teenager and I wore too much. There's also, um, and I haven't done cordage like this, but there's also the, the way to make joins with fabric is if you, yeah, it is a lot shorter, <laughs> but I can still pull it up, but I don't need to as much. I have a dress in the closet that I'm going to wear and I'm getting a new um, sweater. I've ordered it. It should be here soon. Because it's just a very, very small wedding, you know, just, you know, I don't even, I don't even think there'll be 50 people there. So it's a small outdoor wedding. Doesn't need to be a big fancy anything. So one of the other ways you can join fabric is take the two ends, fold them over and make a little slit. And then you take one, whoops. Probably should have made my slit a little bit bigger. And you just slide it through. Yeah, I used to braid my hair a lot, but it had gotten to the point where it was getting caught on everything. I mean, when you can sit on your hair, it's too much. Well, I made it more difficult by not making the holes big enough to start with. Yeah, there's Miss Sandy was wondering about you. I 
I do put lip gloss on for here, but um, I have rosacea. So putting any kind of makeup on my face is always a challenge. So there's another way you can make a join on your fabric. We'll just leave that one in there. And so that's going to make a little bit more of a bump. It is a very meditative process. And again, reminder to everybody, make sure you're in live chat and not top chat so you don't miss anything. And Terrier Gail, could one of you um, put the Zoom Zoom link up now that we've got more people here? Since we've got a Zoom happening tomorrow. Glad the new form worked out. Um, I forgot to put in an option for people that wanted to go to more than to go to both in the month. And I'm still working out the, the thing on the Zooms where we can do like six months or a year. Figuring out how I'm going to do that. Gail said that's one thing I did like about having to wear a face mask, not having to have makeup on. Yeah, I'm with you there. And really, you know, this, it seems like it's time consuming, but it starts to go pretty fast. Oh, weird. Your iPhone won't let me do live chat. I don't know why I updated it. It won't let me be alive. <laughs> oh, hey, Gail and Terry, did we add um, Big Mama's YouTube channel now that she's doing video to your list, your master list? which I still need to get on the website. Ugh. I need to get some new mascara, you know, probably mascara that you haven't used for the last uh, couple years is probably not still good to use. So I need to get some more of that. But yeah, I'm glad it's a casual wedding. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate it. And Gail, yes. There we go. You're dying, Sandy. Nah. Did you ever get everything all moved, Sandy, to your other location? Let's see. Let's clip this off. I don't mind some of the threads going in, but since I do want to make some cordage out of these, let's... see if we can when you're doing the thin stuff um, sometimes it's kind of nice to mix in a little bit of wool roving yeah this has got like some nylon in it I think it was cotton bamboo and there must have been something else in it I don't know very very fine threads <laughs> So who's working on what? Sandy said, I still have my craft room scattered to the three levels. Yeah, and mine are in the three spaces to the couch, the living room, and the studio. Oh, I guess in the fabric closet. Although I don't work there, I do spend a lot of time in the fabric closet. Terry's painting. Ooh. Barbie says, llama fur. Y'all need any? <laughs> I'm going to pass. So after the live today, I'm going to try to see if I can finish the studio. Because tomorrow is lots of peopling. All right, let's just cut this. Well, actually, I'll show you what it looks like without making a cut. Lori is attempting a steampunk-like journal. Ooh, fun. All right, I won't trim this join. I think I'll just leave it this way. I get more exercise going up and down the stairs, at least in my mind. Yeah. Lisa is embroidering a garden, two different ones, as scrolls and or wall hangings. Oh. Gail says, I find time. I'm still working on this huge needlepoint canvas. Philip is working on a long strip type of freeform stitching. 
Terry loves steampunk. Sue Brown says, I've been slow stitching small pieces to my pocket panel fronts. Broke into my bead stash under Susan's influence. Nice. Philippa says, I'll hang it where it get where the breeze gets it. Oh, nice. Michelle says, I just finished a faux microscope slide project in series on YouTube. I'm working in a true hoarder house at the estate company and it's killing me no one has lived there in a couple of years oh my that's got to be crazy veronica said i'm still working on my textile abstract landscape sandy says laurie i just finished my steampunk journal it was so much fun to make Andrea says, I'm tidying, organizing the craft room. I'm expecting fellow crafters. I have so many boxes. Oh, my goodness. You're going to have a, a lot of crafting time. How fun. Lori said, also just bought 150 used zippers that I hope to incorporate into something. Oh, look for zipper art over on Pinterest. I saw some fabulous sculptures with that. Deb Brooks is slow stitching on my scroll. Michelle has been slow stitching pieces to put on cards. And last night I started a new junk journal out of a paper bag and painted the backgrounds. Oh, Terry, good point. She says, wow, I hope it's not moldy, Michelle. I recently found out I'm allergic to mildew. Yikes. Zipper brooches. Okay, stuff for you to go looking for. I, I can't remember the artist, but I remember spending a long time falling down the rabbit hole of looking at some fabulous uh, zipper art. Michelle says, oh, it's moldy, Terry. Rodent droppings, mildew. It's been hard. Oh, yikes. Oh, that sounds horrible. And if it's a hoarder's house, you're going to be there for a while. Andrea, I opened my home May 20, May of 2022. It was amazing. We only knew each other through YouTube. We are friends for life now. All right. So I made this really long join, which is going to be a pain. We all say we are hoarders, but truly there is a difference. I've been there four weeks. I'm only through two rooms. Oh, my goodness. Is anything when you go through a hoarder's house like that because of, of the mildew and rodents and whatever else might have been happening in there, is there anything that is salvageable for them to sell off? Or do you have, I mean, you must be dumpstering a whole lot of it because, boy, you don't get those smells out. Hey, sis. She says, I love your art and channel. Thank you for sharing. You are so welcome. Thank you for your kind words that you share with me. Margaret says, I'm allergic to molds too. That job would kill me. I'm discovering I'm having a hard time um, with raw wool and rusted fabric. It immediately starts getting my throat. So I imagine if I do too much of it, so I'm going to have to use up what things that I have or sell off some of the things or felt the wool which is what I did on some of it. Sue so says, yeah, it makes me feel a bit better about my surroundings. Sandy says, I made zipper roses for my Mad Hatter hat. Yes. Michelle said, we are dumpstering a lot of the problem with the hoarder. Uh, we are dumpstering a lot. The problem with the hoarder house is the kids know there are things that in there they want but nobody knows where they are. So we have to go through everything. Oh, luckily most of the stuff inside the boxes is dry. Wow. He also said it's shocking how many people live in those kinds of extreme hoarding conditions. Yeah. Um, a writer friend of mine posted for a few months, a series of photos about things he was finding in his mother's hoarded hoarding, his hoarding mother's house after she died. It was intense. 
Philippa said, we bought an outside hoarder's house. The place was cleared, but I did have to shovel the dirt out of the kitchen area. The section had been filled with cars and machinery. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sandy says, cashmere nails me. I guess it's good to be poured. Can't poor. Can't afford to buy. Okay, so here's a join there that I didn't cut. So it really doesn't make any difference. It's just you might have a little bit more of a flap, which you can choose to cut off or not. Margaret says, I have a friend who is a hoarder, but she never hoards old food or pizza boxes or whatever. She only hoards potentially useful items, but she is definitely a hoarder. That's kind of, you know, I realize my problem is not necessarily the hoarding, but the shopping before I, you know, before I really think it all the way through, like, why do I need 20 wax seals? And granted, I did buy them when I was working on, on paper books more often. And you could do wax seals, I guess, on fabric. But um, I would buy so much of one thing because I was always, and I think it's just, I'm remembering what it was like to be poor, you know, 25 years ago, living in New Orleans and in a really, really bad part of town and just kind of being afraid that I wasn't going to be able to buy something again. And that's, you know, I'm not in that place anymore. And I need to let go of that idea and get rid of the stuff that I'm not going to use. Let somebody else make good use out of it. Gail said, yeah, those people that don't throw away anything, even garbage, that I don't get. Yeah, me too. You would think. And how do they still maneuver, you know, I mean, that stay somewhat healthy? Sandy says, Margaret, are you talking about me again? Michelle said the mom is in her mid nineties and is living with the daughter. I don't know how she lived there for so long. Wow. Michelle says I hoard art supplies, but I'm not in general a hoarder. I hoard by categories. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think the difference is like our art supplies, we have, you know, nicely stacked away, you know, usually where we can find the things. I mean, if you want to say that, I at one point in my life, we had over 10,000 books in our library. Does that mean I was a hoarder of books? No, we had a library. We had a huge house and a big room that was just wall-to-wall -wall bookcases, floor-to-ceiling bookcases, and that's, that's what we bought the house for. So it wasn't a hoarding. I think it's when, you know, you can't even maneuver around your house anymore. You can't find what you need when you need it. Yeah, I, I am going to, um, I didn't think I would have things for a D stash to put in there in the, um, in the shop, but I'm going to have some new D stash items. Sandy said, I have my hoard organized. All the kids need to do is take to the recycling center. It's separated perfectly for them. Now my library is a craft supply shelf. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I was saving, um, gosh, I had like two, these huge bins of cardboard when I was doing a lot of books. And it was crazy because there was more cardboard coming in all the time. There was no need to hold on to that. Oops. Okay. Uh, you know, when something else was going to be coming in. So it went off to the recycling center. Michelle is waiting for an Amazon order as we speak. I'm waiting for a Michael's order because I decided I wanted more of my bead containers so they would all be the same, first world problems. But because my shelves that I put the beads on are deep, I wanted these bigger containers. There are 32 compartments. And they had a six pack at a really good deal. Carrie said, Michelle, you have seen my mess. I don't think I'm that bad. I'm just used to a bigger house. Yeah. Yeah. Philip is same thing. It's hard moving into a smaller dwelling. Yeah. And we cut the size of our house in half. But to be fair, I wasn't doing that much art when we bought this house. I'm trying to untangle because I, when you are doing cordage with really long things, it just keeps twisting on itself. Sandy says, Terry, I use my big house for my craft. Family is becoming more optional. <laughs> Philip says, takes time to de-stash. Took me a year to decide to de-stash my crocheting yards, yarns. Yeah. You have to really think about, you know, is it something, you know, that I'm going to do again? Is it something that would be easy to replace if I wanted to? 
Brenda said, if I had a bug out bag, I would have a hard time leaving my sewing and craft stuff. It's my stress relief. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I had that issue when we had to get out um, when we thought we were going to have to get out for the fires. And I have, um, I think I'm glad that I have multiple projects at once. I would probably just toss all of those in a bag and leave. Hey, Rebecca dances with pit bulls. How are you doing? Greetings and salutations to you too. Any new puppies? New puppies? Rebecca's got a fun channel. Loves all the kind of stuff that we like here. Andrea says, I would hate to move. Only I could pack my craft room. Absolutely. Yep. Hi, Sylvia, one of our secret squirrels. Thanks for speaking up. She said regarding craft supplies, my daughter says that I hoard. I tell her that I have an inventory. Absolutely. Yep. Gail said, Philippa, I sure can relate to that regarding yarn. I'm still working on it. Been a year since I started. Mm. Michelle said, I would love to have a separate crafts room. So many new puppies. Need to go check out the new puppies. Puppies may not be mean what you think they mean over in Rebecca's uh, world. Ah, Gail, very, very um, varied puppies, a wide variety of puppies, shall we say. Sandy said, I've even organized my dumpster dive in case someone needs some back. Nope, you got it. You own it, Sandy. I am not taking anything back. Yeah, Rebecca does some fun things with dinosaurs and she calls them her puppies. And I just love that. I love the way her brain works. All right. Yeah. Next one. I don't want to have it quite so, so long. So, yeah, I, I'm thinking, you know, a couple nights of TV watching should you know, get this in order. I have a big stack of leather that I think I'm going to sell off too, because it's really, really stiff. It's not, I've got a bunch of leather that I enjoy using. It's softer, but this stuff is so stiff that it's not fun. So I, you know, I bought it thinking I was going to do one thing with it as always. And I didn't, so I need to de-stash. I'm going to try and sell it locally because it's so heavy. Gail said, I thought maybe you raised pities, Rebecca. <laughs> if you need to smile, you need to go watch Rebecca's channel. Because you can't not smile. I want to thank all of you that are here that are in the Facebook group um, when I was kind of MIA for a while for various reasons. You guys all, all pitched in and chatted with one another and supported one another, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, Rebecca says, I wish. I have a no pet lease. That stinks. I could not be without a dog. I just couldn't. And I know, sorry, Sue, I know that's a hard one for you. That's definitely too long. Thank you, Gail. Oh. So I'm already, as I'm doing this one, the green, and I'm already thinking, okay, maybe this is the one I tie a bunch of twigs and things to it. Thank you, Terry. Do you know what, um, Andrea said, you must be so busy with the wedding, et cetera, at the moment. And I'm not. I have nothing to do for the wedding. It is, like I said, very small, probably less than 50 people there, just family. They're not having um, a normal, they just got the wedding website up this week. They're not having any normal attendance. So I have no idea who's standing up for, for them. Maybe one of her brothers and sisters. I have no idea. Oh, enjoy that visit, Sue. So it's, you know, they're in their 40s and they both have um, health struggles. So it's just a very simple gathering. 
and I got nothing to do except we got to get there. <laughs> and that's not a big deal. No, I just, um, part of it has been this trying to literally, I, I let the studio space get so ridiculous of a, I mean, it was just such a disaster. I couldn't even figure out. I have probably five baskets of miscellaneous fabric still to sort, but I decided that's not going to be a priority. I just, you know, put them in, I contained them and that was enough. And then, like I said, I brought in some new stuff. So that was hard. And then I've got this opportunity coming my way that I have to, I have to get some things in order for. Lisa says, thanks for all the links. I've been visiting them all. Yeah, that's one of the things about hanging out here is we try to promote one another. Gail says, you lucky you, Susan. I was a bit stressed out before and during my son's wedding and reception. Yeah, I am really, really lucky. They're, um, of course, my future daughter-in-law is absolutely amazing. And I guess her sister's a wedding planner. So the hardest thing they had was just finding a venue because the first one they had figured out had fallen through. So yeah, it's just, um, and luckily my ex's, uh, my ex-husband and his wife and my ex-mother-in-law, we all get along. So it's not going to be stressful in that regard. I just want them to have nice weather. It's, you know, the, the 11th of March. So it could be cold and windy. It could be rainy and it's outdoors in a nature area. <laughs> Wedding planner in the family helps a lot. Yep. Yeah, because then um, my future daughter-in-law did not have to stress out quite as much over, you know, what happened when the venue they wanted fell through. It's right here in California. It's only going to be, I, I haven't looked it up. I think it's a couple hours, maybe about two and a half hours away, two hours away, maybe. But it's also taking a chunk of freeway that seems to always have construction going on. Lisa said, I recently debulked a lot of fabric and craft items. I'm better in terms of storage and what I use, but still have a lot. All the stuff was cluttering my mind and creativity. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of how I felt. I kept going over yesterday to look at the fabric closet again and again, because it was like, I can find everything. And I rolled the fabric. If you haven't seen it yet, instead of having all my fabric folded on the shelves, I rolled it all up and I can pull something out of the bottom of the shelf and not have everything fall over. It looks so much nicer. And, you know, and I got like with like, like I got all my backing fabrics together and all my linen together and all my felt together. Michelle says, it's so wonderful when everyone can get along and share space. That says a lot. Yeah. Yeah, really lucky. Um, you know, we it was just a very amicable parting. And I talked to, um, well, my ex-husband and I are in touch a lot because of things with the kids, even though they're in their 40s or some stuff. And uh, my former mother-in-law and I talk all the time. Andrew said, I have recently just bought a bag Bogway hand winder at a charity shop for $1.50. Think spinning might be a little easier now. Wait a minute. A hand winder? Is that for spinning? I'm not quite sure what that is, Andrea. If it's not too huge, if you can show us tomorrow in the Zoom, that would be great. I would love to see it. Oh, you received your Steph Francis order. Isn't it amazing stuff? I'm so jealous that, that you don't have to deal with the crazy shipping that we had to. I, I was very happy to do one order from them. Did you get any of their dyed mulberry? Dyed mulberry bark. It's really nice. I got some of their green, of course, green. It's like a, yeah, show it tomorrow would be great. Huh. Wow, but to get it at a bargain at $1.50, I saw, um, I was looking at, just for the heck of it, I don't think I would spend the money on it, but the electric spinners. So I thought maybe that would be enough for the little bit of spinning I want to do. But yeah, the mulberry bark is great. 
I'm anxious today to make progress in the studio so that I can get all my threads out because literally they're just, they're all over the living room and stuff that I'm going to have to, um, I, I just want to get it all reorganized again. Now see, I joined it there and I'm going to have two joins together, but oh well, sometimes it just can't be helped. It just happens. All right. I want a short one. I think what I'll do is just yeah it was very good DMC sent out their what was it 25% off coupon for Valentine's Day and I did not buy any and then there was another um, company yarn company that sent me 25% off and even though I want to get a few different types of yarn for a project I didn't buy any more. It's like, nope, I'm going to keep going with what I have right now. And I'm really trying to tell myself, other than the cordage, I don't want to start anything new until I finish all the projects that I have sitting there. So I was thinking about, I was looking at, I had a whole bunch of things cut for just because books. And I was thinking about doing some little kits. I'm wondering whether I should do all fabric or mixed fabric and paper. Michelle said, my Amazon order just came chunky graphite pencils and brown painter's tape. Oh, you're going to have fun. That's going to be perfect for your paper bag book. Painter's tape is kind of like masking tape, only um, a little bit less tacky usually. At least that's the way I would explain it. How would you explain it, Michelle? You didn't buy anything either, Gail? It was hard because what I do love is that the you can get the pearl cottons on the spools, but I really I need to finish what I've got here and then uh, I'm gonna I'm got a couple little series ideas I guess that, that I'm thinking of and I want to get going on those and see I think I can use up a lot of the stuff that I have already. Lisa says, I use little bolts, folding fat quarters, and making small sack, stacks in plastic shoebox for tiny projects. That's nice. I have, um, I love these little plastic things I found, clear ones that have lids, because most of my little projects, I can fit all my things in there, and then I can put a lid on it, which kind of keeps the um, collection of dog hair down to a minimum. <laughs> Gail said, I haven't figured out where and how to store all that I bought recently as it is. I didn't dare buy anything else. That's that's what happened to me. Literally, I, I needed yarn for the encrusted project um, for a few things that I was doing. And I tell you what, I'm I'm close to finishing that piece. The beading is taking a long time. But I have learned so much on that piece for going forward. And uh, then, you know, I oh, when I ordered the beading containers from Michael's, I was like $5 short for free shipping. So it's like, well, I might as well then buy a thing of yarn. Well, then the yarn was like, buy three, get one free. So of course I bought three to get one free. Yeah. So I just, I brought too many things in, but what's really cool is that I was able by changing the way I did the fabric in the closet by rolling it, I was able to bring in two of the containers, my browns and greens from the garage. So now I have all of that except for sheets. I have two huge bins of nothing but sheets, but I think I will probably be able to eco dye them when the weather gets nicer. You know, it's sort of like going to a um, buffet and thinking that you can, you know, eat more than you really can. That's the way it is with me in projects. I always think I'm going to get, I'm going to be faster and get more accomplished. My accountant told me the other day, um, I need to be a little bit pickier about the projects that I'm doing. 
Philippa says the small food storage containers, you know, the cheap ones are very handy. Yeah, for a long time, I used um, food storage containers that I got at the dollar store. And the only thing I didn't like was that the lids were blue and my OCD was having trouble with that. So over time, I've been upgrading to the all clear ones. Lisa said, my fabric collection can now fit on one table measuring four feet by 36 inches. You know, one of those folding tables. What do you mean by folding? Um, I don't fold. Wait a minute. Let me clip this off. In the past, all my fabric was folded up on the shelves. Now I don't fold it. Now I roll it. And the only ones I did any kind of a tie on were any of the specialty fabrics like the organza and stuff because it was very slippery. The silk and I, yeah, my silk is in a clear bin. If you go to my channel um, before this live, I posted, there was a video that's a short, it's just a short. So it's like 30 seconds that shows, uh, shows my setup. Yeah, there's just, I, I really, and that's why I think I liked rolling the fabric on the shelves is because I could see everything. Because if I don't see what I have, I forget about it. And then I send it to Sandy because I don't know what to do with it anymore. Sandy says, I use the Walmart salad containers after I'm done enjoying it. It's a win-win for me. Yeah, we used to get those salad containers from another local place. And I like those too, except that um, ours were bowls. And they didn't stack very nice. And now, you know, we've got such a problem with water here in California that using all the water to clean things off, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of water to get stuff out of there. So I always have to think about that. So we really try to um, keep our water usage way down. Oh, it's been so windy here lately and the acacias are blooming and that is like my absolute worst allergy. So somebody was asking about kinking. This is what will happen as you start, you know, getting more, but you can just straighten it out. And then now that I have enough, I can start rolling it into a ball. Philippa said the best containers I found are the ones with nails at the hardware store. Good plastic storage. Yes, yes. Those were really good. I have those out in the garage. Um, I use those a lot for storage out in the garage when my husband finishes with them. So then I can start to roll it up. Sandy said, but Susan, I prayed you some rain. Did you need more? Yep. We need more. We're still we're still considered in a drought. Oops. Let's add something else. All right. I need a short, short one. Or a really long one. Ah, crud. I was going to wait a minute. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Just remembered something because this is a slightly different color. I need to see if this is going to be enough for my bottom. This time, no complaints about the leaks. Yeah, I'm okay with where we are right now. We've got, I still got to get the architect out here. Just trying to get an idea on how big the bottom is going to be. Because then once I've gotten past the bottom, I want to alternate with using this other stuff. Just because. All right. It'll be tighter than this, but I need, I need a little bit more. One of the things I'm no good at, maybe somebody else that's done more baskets is better than that. Yes. <laughs> Andrea, you were just going right, right where I was going to go. I have no idea. Um, it's not like I'm trying to make it a particular size. So what I'm kind of trying to do is just get 
the bottom, so I don't care about the, the bottom color as much. And then, um, and the bottom can be smaller, you know, bowls can come up, you know, with a smaller bottom, but I don't want it to fall over. All right, I'm just trying to figure out my length. Uh, it's too, I want a really long one. So maybe somebody else is better than I am at trying to figure out, you know, how, how much cordage will make a basket. But see, it all depends. It depends on how tight you do your stitches. I used to have these all sorted by the long ones and the short ones. And maybe I used up all my long ones. All right, so we're just not going to worry about it anymore. You thought I was talking rain. <laughs> hey, Lorna, how you doing? Yeah, I'm anxious now to try some of the really wide strips and see. I would imagine it might be difficult to twist, but... If I try my other way, sliding it through the little guide. It'll definitely use up a lot of this. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to dye a bunch of the fabric so I get some different colors on them. Because right now I've got just like these huge king size sheets that are just a solid color. And I think if I... Um, start using up some of the paints that I want to use. I have a whole bunch of golden paint to sell too. Golden paint and golden, um, matte, not matte medium, like uh, specialty gels and stuff. I need to sell it off. I'm not going to use it all up. I mean, I'm guessing it's still good. Lorna says, I'm okay. Just finished some journal and made the stupid video. Not my best recording was tired. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to be up and cover all the bases when you're tired to record. Yeah, Terry and Gail are on it on the links. <clears throat> wow, I can just feel my eyes are really watery. Did not take a Sudafed this morning and I already regret it. <clears throat> Dang trees. You know, and then it's hard to go out walking because the allergies get so bad. Making videos is my least favorite. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm getting ready to do a few really important ones, and which is why I'm cleaning like crazy. Michelle says, Lorna, your journals are gorgeous. So see, suffer through the making because everybody loves your work. All right, I think the next join, I'll start adding the next color, maybe. Maybe do one more, yeah, that looks bad. One more small one. Michelle is very sweet. Everybody here is awesome. So supportive of one another, whoops. Hey, Barbara, you've missed almost the whole thing and look what you're doing. You'll definitely watch the replay. Yeah, I just, I've got some old fabric here that wasn't very attractive and it wasn't fun to stitch on as a base fabric. So I ripped it into strips so that I can make cordage, which I will then make into a basket or bowl or whatever you want to call it. I have so much fabric to use up. There will probably be a lot of that, but I won't do this on camera all the time, but it, this is fun to do so that I can actually look at the chat. Oh, that's what I forgot. I forgot my water today. No wonder my throat is complaining. I'll have lots of tea when we're done. I can't ask for my wonderful hubby to get it because he just took off to go get a haircut. Michelle, is it windy over at your place? My chimes are going crazy today. Terry just posted the link for tomorrow's Zoom. Thank you, Terry. Lorna said, been seeing your items on Instagram in your tidy fabric closet. Yes, wasn't that fun? It was so nice to have that part done.
Barbara says, I'm making my second needle book. Um, whoops, went by that fast, uh, like Carol did on her Daffy stream on Sunday. Oh, nice. Vicki says, has anyone used rust powder? Does it work well? Rust powder. I have not used rust powder. Anybody else? I've never even heard of rust powder. Michelle has, or Michelle says yes to Wendy. Okay. Lorna, your fingers never want to work. Not a problem. So do you, are you enjoying your big craft space now that your daughter moved out and you've got, you took over the space? Might be nap time. <laughs> There's a link for the Facebook group. If you're not already a member, we would love to have you join us over there so you can share pictures of your work and we can support you on your creative journey. I'm thinking about, um, it's too small already and growing. Yep, welcome to our world, right? Story of all our lives. I'm thinking on the live streams, I was going to change maybe the uh, the title of it to In the Studio, Craft and Chat Live. It's a little thing, but I'm thinking maybe that might help us bring some more people over. Vicki said, I just learned about rust powder and it's sold on Amazon. Hmm. Has anybody checked it out? Is it like actually rusted stuff like you would be making? Huh. How would you use it, I guess? Oh, Lorna said, I bought rust powder over a year ago and haven't used it yet. Well, that's no help. <laughs> ah, thank you, Terry, for all the links to my website, too. Hopefully, um... Late March, I will be doing a shop update with new art and uh, a little bit of a de stash. So, is the idea on rust powder that I, yeah, I, I just don't understand what the idea is about just yes, rust powder, what it does. Michelle says, I'm rust dying tomorrow. Curious for those who do it to vinegar or no vinegar. I don't like to use it, but wonder if most use vinegar. I have used vinegar. I prefer to use um, tea. It's more like a paint, not actual rust. Oh, interesting. Okay, thank you, Margaret. I might have to check it out. Since the actual rust stuff uh, bothers me now. All right, I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do a couple more. <clears throat> and this stuff then will be a nice accent. This was colored with alcohol. It's, oh, it's like using pigment pigments? Okay. Speaking of pigments, um, the next Fiber Arts Take Two class that's coming up, and again, these are not cheap classes. They're $400 classes. But... Um, Claire Ben, who specializes in using soy, milk, and earth pigments to do to dye her fabric, and you don't have to wash it out and stuff. Um, she's going to be the the next class that opens up, and I had been looking forward to that for a long time. She's I've watched several of her interviews, and she's absolutely amazing. But I realized that I probably am not going to be doing that kind of dyeing. But you might want to go check out. Claire Ben, B-E-N-N, -N, on Fiber Arts Take Two's YouTube channel, and you can see some of what she's going to be doing. If that's the sort of natural um, dyeing that you want to do more of, you might want to check it out. I used vinegar when I start my rust mordant. You know, I put like rusty objects in a jar, and then I put vinegar and water in there and let the things rust so that then I can use that as a mordant when I'm doing any kind of dyeing. Lisa said, I tried strawberry hibiscus tea and the color it produced was a deep pink red. So pretty. Yeah, and you, you never know the different teas are gonna give you different effects.
Okay, so it's using pigments. Okay, so that makes sense. Well, Vicki, I think that would be a good thing to try and then report back to us what you think if you try it out. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something else in pink. Suddenly I have a whole bunch of pink stuff again. I'm not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing a series where I'm just focusing on just one color. Philippa says, I got great rest, great prints off rusty tools by wrapping wet calico around it. Nice and easy way to get some rust prints. Yes. Lisa said, I also tried coloring paper, watercolor paper with berries, like in Tilly Rose books where she shows how to do it. It's lovely. Yeah, there's lots of things you can use to color paper or fabric. Um, the, the biggest thing, of course, is to keep in mind how you're going to use it. If you don't have to worry about color fastness, if it's going in a book, um, you can color fabric with just about anything or fabric or paper with just about anything. You just have to really worry about it if it's going to be some kind of clothing that you want to be able to put through the laundry. Margaret says you can get rust paste as well. Same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I basically just um, spray my papers with uh, tea and put my rusty objects on the paper or the fabric. Or I wrap my fabric in the rusty object and then tie it with a thread and dip it in the tea. You can do that just with tea without even the rust. And you get some really interesting... I mean, without the, I'm sorry, without the item that will rust. But if you do it with a rusty item or with an item that's going to rust, then you can, it takes a long time to dry when they're in the bundle, but you can get some really good effects. Michelle said, Philippa, did you add anything to the water or just let it sit and bleed into the, the fabric? All right. Do a couple more like this. Boy, they're all really trying to get myself at a different Link, the joints are so close together. Did I use up all my long ones? What was the point of me spending all the time to sort out? There's one that's a little longer. Just want to get my joints a little bit more off center. Yeah, like in little bundles. Um, so fun thing to do is just to, if you want the rust, take your rusty object and just wrap it willy nilly and then tie a string around it. And then, you know, I would dip it in tea and then just let it sit out in the sun for as long as you can. And sometimes you can rewet it. Yeah, like Philip is saying, you know, rewet it. And then eventually it's going to dry and you're going to get lines from the string. You're going to get rust that's going to come through in the closest areas. <clears throat> but the other thing you can do is not put a metal object inside there. Put buttons, corks, other things in here and then tie the string around it and then just dip it in the tea and you'll get some really neat tea dye effects. Michelle says, I do black tea a lot, but the fabric gets very grungy and I'm trying to limit the color to mostly rust. So I'm trying to figure out if I can do it without vinegar or tea. Yeah, just do it with water. You might have to just keep re-wetting it a little bit more often. Philippa said, mine were just laid out on wet cloth, cover with a wet cloth and pat down around the shape. Yeah, and you might weigh them down. Um, and you could cover it with plastic, but you can totally do it with just water, especially if you want that rust effect. Tea will give you more of a black look unless you're using um, an herbal tea. Doilies, absolutely. Um, does it produce a lace? Yeah, and it depends. So if you really want to get that lace look on a tea dyed piece of fabric, a plastic 
doily is going to be our plastic tablecloth. It's going to give you the best look. If you're using fabric, you will get some, but not quite as crisp a design because the fabric doily is going to soak up the liquid as well. Michelle said, for us winter people, you can squeeze the bundle and then put it in an oven in an old pan and I can dry them in a couple of hours. Yep. Let's see. I want to get these threads out of here so I can use them. Oh, man, I'm going to have to put some drops in my eyes, too. <clears throat> have a feeling that whatever I dyed this fabric with is probably the fibers are what's getting to me. Is there an odor with leaving the fabric wet for so long? You have to watch it and make sure that you're not going to, um, that things aren't turning moldy. It's kind of one of the reasons I'm not doing as much of that kind of dyeing anymore is that I tend to forget about things. I love um, bundling up stuff to dye in tea or coffee. Michelle, I wonder if you used um, a Robios tea or however you say that, if that would give you your rusty look. Yeah, Michelle says, I don't find an odor unless I use vinegar. Yeah, it's just mostly that you have to make sure that, that uh, if you want it to continue to get darker, you're going to have to keep it damp with something. So you can just dampen it with more water or more tea, depending on what you're using. It's a kind of experiments that you have to do just to see what it is that you like best, because everybody's going to have something different that they like, you know, better. All right, I'm going to bring in. If I get mold, I wash it. No mold, I just dry it. Yeah, Philippa. Because <clears throat> mold is no fun. All right, I'm going to just start to add another color in here. And I'm only going to use one strand of the color one, so it's um, it should blend in nicely. You know, and there are people that uh, they bury their bundles. There are people that um, put safety pins or straight pins in fabric and then leave them hanging outside all winter long. Around here, mold happens so fast that I just don't, I, I, I have to decide how hard I want to work. And it's kind of intense. I've got to dye a bunch of fabric and then I don't want to dye any for months. And get some done with this color and then we'll see if you can see the difference and one thing i haven't done yet with a basket but i've been thinking about is if you get it all up and you decide you want a different color you know hit it with some spray paint michelle said another thing i see a lot of people do is boil onion skins with fabric bundles. Those results are very cool. Yes, and it makes a difference as to which color of onion skins you use. You know, and a lot of other spices. Um, turmeric, you can do it with turmeric. Um, you can do it with paprika. Paprika might give you your rusty look, Michelle. It's going to give you a reddish orange. Philippa said, I did try burying a wrapped rusty tools, got black marks and holes. Lovely. Yeah. Well, and it just depends here in the mountains. It's just mold is just so prevalent, prevalent, blah, rented lips on Wednesdays. I love the look of the fibers that have been left buried, but I would have to then immediately throw them in the washing machine because they would be so moldy. Beetroot juice. Yep. Avocados. I mean, there's just, you know, there's a lot of things you can use to, and you know, in your yard. Okay. Um, I was doing, shoot, what was it I used? Uh, my, um, there was a bush. I can't remember the name of it right now in the yard and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I, I had done a lot of pruning and I took the little branches. We're talking skinny twigs and just threw them in the pot and let them boil for hours. And I got the most beautiful deep brown. It was gorgeous. 
paprika with black tea. Um, the black tea might overpower the paprika, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's like paint mixing. More paprika. Michelle said, best time to pound a leaf on paper. When the leaf is fresh, I would think. Absolutely. I would think when the leaf is fresh. Otherwise, when it's dry, even if you rehydrate it, you're not going to have as much of the plant juices. And it's the plant juice that's going to stain the fabric. That's a fun thing to do, pounding pounding uh, leaves and flowers. Okay, so see, this is just a little bit of color, but you can see how it looks a little different. So that's going to give me, this is going to be my base, and then I will start with this color. And then if I run out of my colored stuff, then the top of the bowl will just be back to this color. Turmeric powder on powder on fabric and it worked great. Yeah, whenever my husband has expired spices, he always asks me if it's one that I want for color. So I've got um, a thing of, I actually have some saffron too. Haven't done it yet, but I do have some saffron. All right, so I think I'll go alternating here. Michelle, so happy you were able to join us for a little while today. Have a great week, you too. Margaret's going to go get ready and have an x-ray appointment. See you next week and see some of you tomorrow on Zoom. Yes, looking forward to seeing you, Margaret. Barbara said, I've heard of people running fresh leaves through their die cutting machine and pressing the color onto fabric and paper. Oh, interesting. That's a very interesting idea. Vicki said on YouTube, Margaret Bird and Myra Made Color have videos on dyeing fabric and yarn. Yeah, there's lots of them out there. Lots and lots of them. Homer, did you just get here and I missed you? Hello, happy to see you here. Hope you feel my hug to you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think this is a good batch. And I think having this color going in is going to be some nice variety be kind of a striped look. All right. So my throat is telling me I need some tea. I'm looking forward to those of you that will join us in the Zoom tomorrow and see you in the Facebook group. But keep on doing your thing. And I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.